Today we're going to talk uh, about uh, what I call the holy triad here, and that's adult stem cells, growth factors, and scaffolds. And those are the three things that make all these things work. You know, we hear a lot of buzzwords about stem cells, but this is what really makes it work. Now, um, what we can see here, there's course, sort of a revolution in the biologics. You know, I'm an orthopedic surgeon, and a lot of times I'm over here, but I really want to get my patients here and get them better without actually taking them to the operating room. And I have a little pet saying that I say, and in this case, the syringe is actually mightier than the scalpel because we're going to get these people better. You know, these surgeries that I have done, these total hips, total knees, I mean, they're barbaric surgeries when all said and done. They're, we're going to laugh at them someday when we say, my God, how could we have done those things? They're, they're just too barbaric. And, and stem cells are going to make us get rid of those kind of operations. Now, the goal of my presentation is to let everybody in this room learn how to do these things. These are not hard to do. You don't have to have an MD, PhD to do these. You don't need a laboratory that costs you $50,000. These are something that you can do relatively inexpensively. There's a bit of a learning curve, and you've got to always be dedicated to want to learn more about these, but they're easy to do. They're safe to do, and you can do them fairly inexpensively. Let's talk about platelet-rich plasma, because that's really the basis of this field. If you don't want to deal with platelet-rich plasma, then you shouldn't be involved with stem cells. You might as well do, do something else, because you're not going to really do a good job at it. Now, we used to think that platelet-rich plasma, basically, uh, the platelets were responsible for clotting the blood and things like that. That could be no further from the truth. The platelets really are a, a treasure trove of growth factors. These growth factors are what really turn on the stem cells, and that's what makes them really do their work. Now, here's a, uh, a schematic uh, representation of peripheral blood, and look at how many platelets are there. And I'm going to give you a slide that shows the same thing. You can see these little blue guys here are the platelets. Now let's move on, and here's a scheme of the opposite. Look at how many platelets we have here, and here's what the same slide would look at in platelet-rich plasma. Certainly a much higher concentration, and this is what we want because that's where all those growth factors are. So that's the whole idea. We're concentrating these platelets down. Now what's in a good PRP? Okay, well obviously you're going to have platelets. You're going to have neutrophils. That's a bit of a controversial topic, but I'm going to tell you, most of the people that are really in the know with this really think that white blood cells, monocytes, neutrophils, etc., are really a very important thing. Fibroblasts, well, that's an important thing also, obviously. Endothelial cells, one of the more important things that you could think about. Why? I want you to think of stem cells like an army. And like any army, it has, a have, has to have a supply line. If you outrun your supply line, you're going to be doomed to failure. The endothelial cells get that neovascularization going, to get that blood supply going. So without that, you're going to not do too well. And you're going to see throughout the talk how important it is with angiogenesis. Angiogenesis, we keep talking about that with stem cells and, and how they work. And then, of course, we have some keratinocytes. Now, this is a good slide. Um, here we can see the various growth factors that are found in platelets. I'll draw your attention to one here, Vas VEGF, vascular endothelial growth factor. What does it do? It gets that blood supply going. Okay. What's another important one? IGF, okay, that one over there, IGF-1 actually, right here. That's something that really concerns uh, some of the sporting world. The World Anti-Doping Agency up until 2010 forbid us to use PRP. Now they're use letting us use it right now, but they're still very much concerned about this as far as performance enhancement. I don't believe it will give performance enhancement. If you put a PRP in a regular muscle, I don't think it's going to do anything. Now, there's probably ways that we could manipulate PRPs, but we don't need to get into that here to maybe enhance performance. But again, I don't want to really get into that. That's beyond the scope of our lecture here. So now, when we talk about the growth factors, there's a lot of confusing nomenclature about these things. Uh, some of the growth factors are named after their cell of origin, such as the platelet-derived growth factor. Others are named after their target cell, and others are named just no real in particular name as to what they do. Um, so basically, you can't really tell when you hear what these growth factors do necessarily what they really are important about. Now, basically, these growth factors, as like stem cells, they can have a couple of different effects. They can have an endocrine effect where they can affect cells in a very distant uh, area. They can have an autocrine effect where they're kind of affecting the cells right there. Or they could have a paracrine effect where they affect cells that are sort of nearby. Now, the, the one thing we don't even know about stem cells, for instance, is do they really make new tissue or are they just kind of little biochemical factories 
that are making certain growth factors that really make a lot of the pain go away. We, we don't know for sure. I mean, that's one of the things we have to kind of figure out. Um, the bottom line for these growth factors, they cause stem cells to grow in number and differentiate into various types of tissue. So that's the important thing to remember about that. Now, here's a very good example. Right here we see some activated stem cells. Here we see the cell membrane of a stem cell. Excuse me, uh, this is activated platelets, excuse me. Here we see the cell membrane of a stem cell. Now I want you to realize one thing. The cell membrane is the eyes and ears of the cell. Very important. So what you want to do when you're treating your patients, you want to get that cell membrane as healthy as possible. What's one of the ways to do it? Omega-3 fish oil. Where does it go into the cell membrane, among other things? Because here we have all the receptors for the growth factors. So if that cell membrane is not really working up to function, you're going to have a problem. Your, your results aren't going to be as good. Believe me, nutraceuticals are extremely important in stem cell science. I can't stress to you how important it is.